Um, yeah, so I'm like, like struggling with, um, I just like keep trying to be conscious of like drinking and I'll go through like these heavy, heavy bouts. And yeah, like yeah. I had that same weekend with you or like when we met up a couple times and I was just perpetually drunk. Like, um, and there was so many different moments where I was like completely blackout. Yeah. And, but I still like got so much shit done. Like yeah. did two podcasts, did a photo shoot, mm -hmm. like all the stuff. But, um, coming out the end of it, I was just like the, the, the next morning on Wednesday, we had a kind of early night Tuesday. I went out to dinner with Cinda, um, mm -hmm. and then had a couple of drinks, nothing crazy. And then we were just like talking about stuff all night. And by like the morning, I was like, I was so shaky. I went to like take a piss. It was like, yeah. I barely peed. And it's just like thick yellow, right? right? Like, <laughs> so dehydrated. Yeah. And uh, so then I took three days off and yeah. I wanted to do more, but then I had like a birthday party. And I was like, ah, fuck it. But yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I mean, obviously it's just constantly like finding that balance because mm -hmm. right now getting this thing started, um, I mean, I want it to be like mostly just like whatever, whatever you want to do. Like yeah. we want to drink liquor. We want to fucking smoke weed. Mm -hmm. um, at some point I'll probably take some mushrooms and do one of these, you know, mm -hmm. with the right person. So right. it's, um, it's definitely a little bit more leans into like the debaucherous side of yeah humor and funny and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So like building that and figuring out that balance is like, I'll almost always like be down to get s some sort of fucked up um for a podcast but then i'll probably be like if i'm trying to find a balance be like okay i'm only drinking on podcast days or something like if i yeah. need to, like, find like a you know happy medium mm -hmm. so no fun. yeah i definitely know that feeling like after this last like extended you know period of drinking it took me like probably like two or three days before i even just like felt like normal yeah and like i think that we talked about this it's like you know, when you get to that point, you're like, oh my god, am I ever going to, like, feel normal again? <laughs> like, it's going to last forever. Yeah. But, um, it always does. And then, I guess, like, because, like, for me, I just kind of noticed, like, you know, a lot more things slide, you know, like, with my business oh, and, yeah. and things like that. And then, like, in that period of time, like, afterwards when, you know, your body's still trying to recover and you feel like shit, it just seems that much worse. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's the one, I guess the one good thing of like a hangover or mm -hmm. whatever is like, it's, it's like to show you be like, like it helps me get kicked my ass in gear. Seriously. You know, it's just like when you're, when you're miserable, you're like, what the fuck have I been doing? Right. And then, uh, and then you're like in that low, mm -hmm. you know, and like your serotonin is depleted. I mean, there's a lot of chemical that goes into it, like, oh, but, but then you're just sitting there like, dude, I gotta get it together mm -hmm. and then like you start formulating a plan and then like that's for me where like a lot of ambition comes from yeah and same I'll, and then all of a sudden i'll just like kick it up a notch mm -hmm. and like, get a ton done and yeah um yeah i think it's like you said you know kind of fun of that balance because you go and you're drunk and like everything's fun and you feel good about stuff that you know maybe you would normally feel good about like yeah. that you haven't accomplished yet and then you come back to reality and you're like, oh, fuck. And then, like, you beat yourself into, like, you know, doing shit. And then you start feeling good again. So then, like, start drinking again. Yeah. And then it just, like, repeats. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's... I've been trying to figure out, like, is that really a bad thing? Or is yeah. that just, you know, as long as you keep checking it, you know? Yeah. Um, so I'm like, I don't... Like, so far, I haven't... Um, I mean, there has to be a level of, of like, say, drinking that has to um, be less as I age, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm mid thirties, but like, I can't be doing this at 50. I was, you know? I was just thinking the same. Thing. Right. Like, so yeah. and that doesn't mean I don't want to ever drink 50, but I mean, right. yeah, you can't be like drinking the same way. Um, I mean, I guess the cool thing about your, your liver is it can replenish, uh, Yeah, but there's still like problems that can come from that. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, your liver basically stores, you know, a lot of those toxins. So, from what I understand, the longer you go without, like, the better you'll just kind of, like, overall feel. Yeah. And I think, you know, like, what you were saying is, like, <coughs> you know, are you still getting stuff done? I think looking at, like, a large frame of, like, looking at things over a large span of time, like, let's say that, you know, you are drinking, like, 
<laughs> heavily and then not and kicking your ass into shape and then not it's like over the course of like let's say six months you know are you further along than you were a year ago yeah you know because some some people will will drink or like use and they just end up like completely like ruining their fucking lives right you know but if you're like now granted it's probably not as far along as you could be if you were like straight edge but then again like you said you probably get a lot of inspiration and stuff from <clears throat> that's the thing that's like almost immeasurable yeah. like for me is the different inspirations i've had on either drinking or like um drinking with friends you know like i mean take this podcast for example mm-hmm. if i'm drinking with a friend and we're talking about something and all of a sudden an idea hits like that idea might not have came mm-hmm. if it wasn't for some sort of inebriation or yeah. cocaine or right. mushrooms or whatever and you can't really uh, measure it but if you were just straight edge you might have never had certain mm-hmm. things but no, that's true. Um, yeah, one of the things Luke said to me when I was up there, he was just like, dude, he's like, if you spend as much time, uh, as much time as you do fucking and trying to fuck as, or it, it spent that on working instead, he's like, you'd already be a multimillionaire. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, probably right. It's but, true. <laughs> but I've also like thought like, I know how miserable I get if I'm like lonely or like not seeing anyone. Mm-hmm. And, uh, if I went, like, two months, three months, four months, I'm just like, I'm not going to see anyone, I'm not going to, like, socialize and date or whatever, I would, I, I would, like, be uninspired right. and unmotivated, and then I would just, like, probably end up sitting around and not working anyway. Right. <laughs> and so yeah. sometimes I think, like, like, the chase of, of sex and relationship and stuff helps me be, mm-hmm. like, motivated to do cool yeah. things or, like, to build cool things. Yeah, it is definitely... A motivator. Um, Because, yeah, I mean, I've noticed that, too. Like, you know, when you're by yourself, you're doing, you know, things at your own pace, but then if you're around other people, and, you know, there's, like, either that competition or, mm-hmm. you know, that attraction or or something. Yeah, there's that, I don't know what movie you're book but it's like the saying, like, everything in life is about sex, except for sex is about power. I don't know if you've heard that, but uh, um, I don't really know how I feel about, like, the power part, but I do know that, like... Like, it does seem like for most, for most people, if you're honest, it is, most things are about sex. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily, like, just the physical act, but, like, the long run act. Like, mating, or it's like, yeah, yeah, like, I want to build, like, a business or a career. Like, like, what do you want it for? Well, I want to, I want to be a better human, so, for what? Like, well, so then I can attract a mate, you know? Like, there's almost always, like, you want to stand out from the crowds or whatever, so. Yeah, yeah, minimalizing it, it, everything does come down to that. Yeah, like, I, there's probably a lot of things I wouldn't do if I, like, didn't want to have sex. <laughs> right. Be like, well, yeah, I don't need to do that because I'm not trying to attract anyone. I'll just... Uh, right, but then what are people doing stuff for? You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but it's like, I was like, you got to... Instead of worrying about stuff, you got to be doing stuff. You got to be doing, doing stuff. Doing stuff. stuff. <laughs> You're not worrying about stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so do that stuff. Don't worry about that other stuff. Um, there's this thing that I was talking to... Uh, um, this girl I know, she, I was talking about like seeing m- multiple people or like not being monogamous. And, um, mm-hmm. she was like, that sounds complicated. And I was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, it can be. And so I just like thinking a lot about it. Um, I don't think I've talked about this in the podcast yet. So it's like something I've been thinking about the last couple of days, but, and I talked to Joe a little bit about it, but I was like, yeah, I guess it is complicated. Like adding more people or adding more mm-hmm. like connections. But I was like, everything in life like that I want to do is probably going to create complication. Um, and if I wanted to simplify my life, I would, I would stop hanging out with people because people are complicated in this drama. Mm-hmm. I would stay at home with my cat <laughs> and I would watch Netflix. Yeah. I would go to work, I'd come home, and then my life would be very simple. Right. But what would that leave me? I would be lonely. I would be uh, uninspired, unmotivated. Right like unexcited and mm-hmm. i would just be like like that's definitely not the life i want right yeah. so i was like with ambition and relationship and uh drive and passion and adventure comes complication like right. i'm going to have to accept that things are complicated at times mm-hmm. and then it's more of like uh just managing that you know mm-hmm. but yeah like what what are, what are those two things that i want i mean i definitely don't want the the former you know yeah yeah well, I think that 
a lot of people kind of because I was thinking back to when you know I worked for for other people like for instance the longest standing job that I had before um I got to solar was I worked for a car dealership right oh yeah and, um, how long were you there it's there for like seven years that's a long time it was a long time but I mean everything was just like so cut and dry and so I found like a lot of comfort I think in just the routine you know I'd, ha- I'd wake up like I'd have to be there at a certain time or I'd get fired or <coughs> whatever and then um I was constantly like stimulated during the day by like customers coming in I was in the service department mm-hmm. and and so like that kind of created like a little bit of you know competition and like so when I ended up like leaving at the end of the day like I wasn't I was fulfilled in like that little I guess, environment. Yeah. You know, so then, like, when the weekend came, like, the weekends were way more fun. Yeah. You know, because it was like, I'm just kind of living for the weekend. Yeah. You know, you, you just kind of reach that point. So, I mean, that's, like, what what you were just saying. It was just stuff that a lot of people, and I'm sure you'll, you know, podcast with, like, people that are on, like, both sides of the spectrum. Yeah. It's just stuff that, like, a lot of people don't have to think about. And I was thinking when I was at the gas station earlier, like, trying to go back to that would be like impossible. Yeah. Like even, even like fine. And even if I was just like, okay, like, you know, screw this, like, you know, go to my own business and like work on my own hours. I just want to like go back to like the set, like routine. Like you, you can't do that. Yeah. It's like a Pandora's box. Like once you open it, you can't Yeah. close it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's that the idea of like, you don't know, you don't always know what you want until you mm-hmm. taste it. Mm-hmm. Um, like I've, I've seen that in, um, definitely in life, like I noticed that in sex, for example, mm-hmm. for example, like when you first have sex, you don't know what you want, you don't know what you like, <laughs> you know, you're just like trying stuff out. Yeah. And uh, there's like, once I like had a girlfriend that sh- like showed me role plays, I was mm-hmm. like, oh, oh, I like this. <laughs> yeah. and, like then you can't go back. Or like when yeah. I first um, like met girls that liked other girls, mm-hmm. and then I was like, oh, I can't go back to straight girls. Like, right. It's like really boring. <laughs> Right. So yeah, it's like the Pandora box. Like, oh, now that I've discovered this, mm. like, I can't go back to like a normal yeah you know, life. Yeah, you like don't know what you don't. When know. you uh, when you were working there, like, do you remember feeling like, um, like dreading going to work or when oh you... every day? Okay, every day. But it's like it's kind of like what you were saying, <laughs> like you know, maybe going to the gym. Like you don't want to do it, but like once you get there and you're there, like you accept it. Yeah. So, like, I hated it, Um, you know, every, and and the whole time I was there, I was constantly thinking about a way to get out. Yeah. You know, or, like, you know, looking at other job opportunities or, like, people that would bring their cars in for service, and they, like, there was, like, this one guy, and he was a pharmaceutical rep, and I was like, wow, that'd be a really cool job to have, you know? So, kind of, like, you're constantly, like, envying, like, what other people have, but at the same time... You're not really ever that grateful for what you have, though. Yeah. I mean, so I guess, yeah, I hated every moment of it. Like, it sucked. That's the craziest thing. Like, I, I, I wonder what the percentages of it is, but, like, it has to be, like, 80% of people that just go to their jobs are like, fuck this. Like, mm-hmm. when they get in the morning, yeah, you accept it. Like, I have people that come in for lunch at my bar, you know, be like, right. oh, how's your day? Like, oh, just try to get through the week man right you know and they're like it's almost friday i'm just like oh that sounds awful <laughs> and i remember it like uh when i was like doing like uh phone sales and stuff and just like waking up at 5 30 be like fuck mm-hmm. and then like was sitting down at my desk like trying to pick up the phone to like cold call it was brutal oh like, yeah and uh, just being miserable every single fucking day and uh, when you finally find like a, even if, if it's just a nine to five that you kind of enjoy, it's so much better. So, you know? Yeah, so much better. <laughs> like I think that I think that what happens a lot of time is like you're there and you just like endure it, and so then when like you get to leave and you go home or it's like the weekend, like your joy level is just like so much more. <laughs> yeah. than, you're like, oh my god, like this is great, but yeah. then it's kind of like that vacation syndrome, you know, where like you know you're going to have to go home at yeah. some point. And, like, in this case, like, home is, like, going back to work. And those are the worst because, well, 
especially in your typical like nine to five or whatever you have it's Friday, so you finally mm-hmm. clock out on Friday, so you're Friday night. Mm-hmm. So you're like partying Friday night. Saturday, you're a little hungover, but you might go do some of the cool, like I was in San Diego, mm-hmm. so like go to the beach or something. Yeah. So you have some fun. Yeah. But Sunday was always all like just spent prepping for the week mm-hmm. and dreading getting up on Monday. Like yeah. I could enjoy Sundays hardly at all. So I really only had like yeah. that friday evening and saturday to enjoy yeah it's just barely any time and then like sunday i'm already just like constant like, oh fuck i don't want to go work monday fuck it's right. like constant dread yeah so oh. it's very short-lived i mean i guess i understand it like for people that have have families and they're doing it for like that reason because I, I remember you know that was my situation you know i had just gotten married and you know had a baby yeah yeah so it's like it kind of gives you like that extra sense of responsibility. Mm-hmm. And so you're there and you're like, well, you know, like I'm, I'm providing, you know, this yeah. is, this is what I'm doing. And so that was kind of a little bit of an added part of it. But then I also worked there like after I was divorced and they had moved out here. And then at that point it was just like pure fucking hell. Uh, <laughs> it's like, what? it's like, what am I doing? Yeah. So strange. Like I'm obviously still like in this transitionary period of like working for, you know, kind of like a nine to five or the bar, but mm-hmm. like the bar is, is still a really enjoyable job. Like I, I really yeah. taken stock for a while before I even picked up the camera thinking like, what if I'm like, what if this is all I do? Mm-hmm. But I was just like, dude, that's actually really nice. Like I don't dread going to work. I don't hate it. I mean, there's yeah. a couple of times where you're like, sure. I don't want it, but for right. the most part, I get to go and I hang out with people that are cool and like yeah. get to shoot the shit. Which that's yeah. rare, right? It's very yeah, rare. so I'm like, I'm still in a top tier of people who like get to enjoy going to work, mm-hmm. um, and that was that's still working at a job that's not really a fulfilling long term. Right. It's just more for the paycheck. But yeah, I don't know if there's like any right or wrong for people, but like, like there's obviously working to live, and then there's like living to work, and I'm. Yeah trying to move towards a position where I'm living to work. Like I'm, mm-hmm. I love the thing that I'm doing for work and mm-hmm. you know, that's what I'm living for. Yeah. But a lot of people don't get that opportunity. No. Or... I think there's like two different, like two different types. There's like the people that like actually like legit hate, fucking hate it. Yeah. You know? And then there's like people like you where, cause I mean, no, no matter, what, <laughs> no matter what you're doing, if it's technically like a job and you're not, like a rock star or a, you know, full-time artist yeah. or something and absolutely doing stuff you love. But then even then, you know, anytime you have to be like, okay, I have to sit down and I have to do this, yeah. it becomes work. Right. Right. Dude, I've thought about that a lot with like, um, like photography and thinking, okay, if I get to, when I get to a point where mm-hmm. I'm shooting full-time, I still want to move my business ultimately for where I'm shooting for me mm-hmm. and not for other people. Cause I'm like, I'm still working for someone. So if I shoot a wedding, they're like, oh, God, I got to these this. wedding photos. I have to get to this thing. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that's still not the most inspiring thing, you know, mm-hmm. or, you know, editing a shoot or even getting there. Like, Oh man, I really don't want to do this. Like company's headshots, like, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So that's where I'm like, I mean, that is still probably a stepping stone mm-hmm. for me. And then getting to a point where all of the like shooting or art or whatever I'm making is that the projects I chose and I want to do, mm-hmm. that's like my ultimate goal is like, mm-hmm. yeah. When I pick up, like if I, Oh, I don't want to have this conversation. I'm like, well, then I would have scheduled that conversation in the first place. You know, like if I'm podcasting yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But I was thinking um, just earlier today, I was like, um, I was feeling super miserable because I was sick yesterday and like hurting. I'm like, dude, I'm, I, I feel broken right now. <laughs> and then I came into today and I was like, dude, but my life's so good. Like if, <laughs> when I get this podcast to a point where it's self sustaining, like I literally am waking up go to the gym and then we're like i get to go talk to my homie for like two hours and get mm-hmm. a little tipsy mm-hmm. and then if i have to go talk to him, you know like it's just so dope yeah i was listening to a podcast today and they were saying it was like a spontaneous one they're like driving down the street and they see one of their buddies like yo what are you doing like, I don't know what you're doing. do you want to do a podcast they're like yeah and then they just go to the studio and start yeah. like drinking and shooting the shit you know I'm like dude that's that's fucking dope. that's that's the ticket right there yeah yeah i mean and i think like i said you'll it'd be interesting you know when you're doing this to maybe interview somebody that or podcast with somebody that you know does work 
like or because it's no one person's not better than the other but like to get like a new person because i would be interested i think i told you this before like i would be interested in hearing like if they're like oh my god like it just fucking sucks ass every day. Like, you know, this is the only, my only one of my only free time and I'm actually having fun. Everything else yeah. blows, you yeah. know, it'd be interesting to hear that. Cause like I said, no matter what you consider work, it's always going to like feel like work. It's just when you have somebody else telling you that you got to do it. Yeah. Then it really sucks. Yeah. How do you feel then? So, cause you always worked at the dealership. Mm -hmm. You worked at Rudy's. Mm -hmm. You worked at Auric. Um, and now you're like in a position where you work yourself. Do you feel like mm -hmm. it's definitely like a step up of mm -hmm. better versus, uh, yeah, working mm -hmm. nine to five? I do. I think that the way I feel about it now is the, cause I get tired of the business, yeah. you know, but I think the way I feel about it now is that there's really, I've looked, there's really nothing else that I feel like would be better to get me to where I want to be. Yeah. So like it's, it's the perfect, and I don't know if Cameron talked about this at all, but you know, just how lucrative it is. It's like, I'm really just using it as a highway yeah. to get to where I want to be. So if I think about it like that, I'm like, yeah, like, you know, I don't want to drive to Parma and, you know, meet with these people. But I know that every time I do that, it's like moving the needle. Right. Whereas I guess you could feel like that if you're like investing into your 401k and stuff like that, right. like, this is going to be like, a much faster way so once i started like kind of flipping the way i felt about it that way yeah i started to enjoy it a lot more yeah you know because it's just it's just like effortless now so it's like kind of like on autopilot and it yeah. also gives me a really good opportunity <laughs> to you know if i'm ever like feeling complacent or i'm feeling like i'm bored or something like i can always just dive into it yeah yeah but there is there is that struggle of like it's never it's never like a nine to five where like you clock in and you clock out. Right. You know? So I would say, but overall, yeah, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think about there's like, I guess there's pros and cons to everything. So like, there's definitely a lot more like complication, like mm -hmm. saying like you have a little, probably more stress, mm -hmm. you have, you know, and then everything is up to you. You can't blame anyone else. Right. Like, you're like, you're not getting what you're, yeah, need done. It's like oh <laughs> shit, like I'm being a piece of shit. You know? yes, <laughs> directly come back. Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, I noticed like with you guys, like you and Cameron both, like um, I mean, I don't know how how many years you've been doing solo business, but like just the money moves that you guys have made so quickly. I'm mm -hmm. like that would take somebody else ten years or twenty years at a night, like working for somebody else to right. save penny pinch their Starbucks, you know, not eat out too often, you know, mm -hmm. that those kind of things just to like slowly build over time. And yeah, like Cameron's talking about just how quickly he was able to save for a house and like put it together and just like buckle down, you yeah. know, strap in, work hard for six months. And then he has like this cash to put down for how I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. yeah it's definitely a huge highway when it comes to that. Kind of it thing. is. It yeah. is. And there's a lot of people that, so I just like recently, <laughs> kind of accepted that like after I guess this last you know week when I was when I was drinking a lot I was like okay like this is stupid like I literally have you know this opportunity I need to like make the most of it so yeah. that's like part of the reason why I'm like toning it down right now and being like okay if I really you know focus like two years of my life on this and like that's all I do yeah. you know while still like having the relationships that are important to me being healthy and like, yeah, I might not be able to like go out as much, but overall, I think that, you know, the end, the end result will, will be much better. Yeah, for sure. That's where I, uh, I mean, I constantly get, I mean, I just go back and forth with like, okay, how much is too much when it comes to like indulgences, mm -hmm. drinking sex, mm -hmm. I mean, Drug, sex, and rock and roll, basically. <laughs> it's like, how much? Like, because drug, sex, and rock and roll is awesome. But if that's all I do, mm -hmm. uh, then I'm not building anything. You know, it's all pretty much consumption. Mm -hmm. And, like, so, yeah, finding that balance, it almost always comes back to finding the balance for me. And, like, everybody's balance is different. But, mm -hmm. like, yeah, if I really dialed it back, like, I was thinking, like, I, I was going to ask you about the, um, the 75 hard, because... Mm -hmm. Um, my friend Lisa in Canada, she's doing it right now. Mm -hmm. And there's like these certain things about her that like I admire. And then there's other things that I'm just like, 
but I don't want that, and I don't want that, you know, yeah. so it's like, I mean, same with Luke, like, mm -hmm. like, there's all these things, and, like, he's way ahead of me, and, like, the things he's building and stuff, mm -hmm. but then there's other things, I'm like, I don't want to get caught in the trap of just never-ending building something, like, and then the next level, and the next level, but, like, not enjoying it along the way, mm -hmm. you know, so you don't want to enjoy everything and then never build anything, mm -hmm. but you don't want to just always be building and never enjoying, what the things that you've created right. for yourself, you know, yeah. so... Um, but yeah, cause I remember talking to you, um, coming out of 75 hard when we went yeah. on that bender, <laughs> Yeah, but you're like, yeah, like there's, there's this part that you get all the shit done mm -hmm. and, but then you start feeling like, like isolated mm -hmm. and, you know, so yeah, fuck if I know the, like the best way to balance those two things, but mm -hmm. that's what sometimes terrifies me about going like sober, sober for say like three months. It's mm -hmm. just like, I know my tendencies to hermit. And then mm -hmm. if I start hermiting, I start, like, feeling, like, down, unmotivated, a little, like, lonely, like, I could feel yeah. that kind of stuff. Even though I feel, like, clear, you yeah. know, I'm just, like, dude, like, yeah. and then I don't, like, I find myself not wanting to go meet up with people, even if I'm, like, I could right. meet up and not drink, but I just don't want to, like, hang out with Your nights end a lot earlier. Yeah. You know? And then at some point, I'm just, like, what am I, like, I haven't mm -hmm. seen my friends in a while, and I'm just, like... I mean, like, work's cool, but, yeah. you know, like, for what, if I'm not enjoying it, you know, and then I'll start, like, I'll, those so thoughts start cycling more and more as I'm yeah. getting into it. Well, I think, and I was thinking about that a lot, but I think that one thing that I kind of realized for myself is it's like, I have to be able to have fun doing other things. Yeah. Right? So, like, so, for instance, you know, I basically, you know, Monday through Saturday are for work, and then Sunday is for, you know, basically, like, golf. Yeah. Or, you know, there's a couple of other guys that, you know, either do door-to-door, -door, they do solar. So, you know, like, that's a day where I don't think about work at yeah. all. So, or for instance, I think it's just... How do you golf sober, though? <laughs> that's, that's a good point, too. You just, you're really focused. Um, I'm just kidding. But, I mean, because I, I kind of ask myself the question, is like, do I have to be drunk to have fun? And, oh, yeah. and if so, like, what is that really saying? So like, yeah, it sucks, but you know, there were things that I, that I enjoyed, you know, immensely before I started drinking. Yeah. For you sure. know, so it's just kind of like getting back to that. I think it's just such a trained behavior at this point. Cause it is fun as hell. Yeah. You know, but like it's, it's at the same time, I think it's like an exercise in like self control and also, yeah you know, being like, okay, what things can I do? Like, and then maybe some people come to the realization that <laughs> like, okay, well, if I'm not drinking, I'm not having fun. Right. And then they address that. However, they're going to address yeah. that, you know? Yeah. I think that that check, those checks and balances are really crucial. Cause I'm like, yeah, if you're finding out that you are not, you can only have fun when you're drinking, that's when you mm -hmm. have a problem. I would say. Yeah. Personally, it's just like, you can still, like, if you are sitting at a point where you can cut it out and have fun and then drink and still have fun, like, that's a good balance. But, yeah, if you're at a point where, yeah, when I don't drink, I'm miserable. And it's like, that's then you're like, oh, fuck, dude. You <laughs> and I just recently faced that. Like, okay. Yeah. Like, recently faced that. And so, like, what's been happening a lot, like, during the last week is just, there's just been moments where I've just been, like, sitting there. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, so then, and so then what do you do at that point like you like i know like what i should be doing like i could pick up a book yeah like i could you know pick up an instrument i could like get better at something mm -hmm. you know and so i think it's like just because the pattern of behavior for so long has been like oh i'm not doing anything let me go to the bar yeah. i'm not doing anything let me do this so it's it's difficult yeah there is like yeah i think you like you said it's um um, train behavior or whatever, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of activities that you can do that are still like consumption. Like, mm -hmm. like you can go boating and yeah. not drink. Well, like everyone drinks boating, but it, like that's enhances it. Like you're like, ah, oh, well, we're drinking like cracks of beers. That's yeah. fun. But you could also go out with people who are drinking. But yeah, I'm not drinking. But like, let's hang out and you yeah. have a blast. Like, mm -hmm. um, and I have like met recently some people that have been like sober for a couple of years and they're still pretty active like yeah. doing this and this you're like oh so it's possible it's just mm -hmm. it's definitely not the norm um mm -hmm. as far as like american society or even like what like we definitely have like a boozy society like yeah. or it's become more and more so over time it yeah. feels um but i don't like 
there's certain people that like drink to escape um like the misery of life mm -hmm. and i don't feel that like it doesn't resonate with me at all like it's yeah. just like i drink because i'm like having fun and yeah. I'm enjoying it but that still can be a problem over time mm -hmm. so yeah i'm like a just a perpetual like fun haver and if people are having fun around me like yeah. i want to have fun right but it's yeah i, I see what you're i've never felt like Wow, I'm like <laughs> so fucking sad. Like I'm gonna pick up a six pack and just go like home and drink to like escape. Like yeah. maybe it, you know been borderline a couple of times, but I'm the, I'm the type of person where it's like if I'm around people and they're doing something and it's fun, like it's gonna be really hard for me to not do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love that I'm like having this conversation as I like ripped a shot and I'm drinking. Right. I was a uh, we were at the bar. Um, uh, fuck, we were at Quinn's. And this, we were talking about drinking, and this random dude just kept butting in our conversation. <laughs> like, uh, it's me and this girl I've been hanging out with, and just talking about life and like getting fucked up and like trying to. She's always said she's like, I'm trying to quit. You know, she'll say that about everything. It's like pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, Hey, do you want this? She's like, Oh no, thanks. Trying to quit. <laughs> and then a second later, she'll do it. Yeah. Um, but so, this dude just keeps butting in, and he's just like. Oh, yeah, like, that reminds me, I'm like, oh, my God. And he's just, like, giving, like, his own advice, like, every fucking second. Mm -hmm. And about, like, the eighth time, he was, like, buddy, and I was like, that's number eight, bro. <laughs> he's like, hey, man, I don't mean to butt in, but... And I was like, yes, you do. <laughs> he's like, yeah, like, I'm actually, like, a lot of people think of me as a therapist. So I'm like, are you the therapist that, like, listens, or are you the therapist that just talks over no, <laughs> like, I slot time. Thanks for coming. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but so he was, he's, we were talking about quitting like booze and whatever, and he had already offered us a shot and she, that's when she was like, no, thanks, try to quit. And then we were talking about like, you know, struggling with, you know, when's okay to drink and not, and just life and shit like that. And he's just like, oh, you know, I figure out, I, I know the best way to like quit. He's like, you just got to stop cold turkey. Like, and it's just, it's, you know, it might sound hard, but it's really easy. And this other girl who's, like, struggled with alcoholism, she's like, fuck you. Like, that's not that easy for certain people. I love that this but, whole collection of people is at the bar. Yeah, and I was like, isn't it ironic when people are talking about how easy it is to quit drinking over shots and beers? <laughs> like, <laughs> Seriously. But it does happen all the time. It you're, does. like, talking about how you're going to do a bunch of cool shit in your life while you're fucked up. <laughs> that's exactly what happens, dude. It's exactly what fucking happens. Or are you thinking about all the things that you're going to do mm -hmm. while you're fucked up? And the, what I realize is when you're sober, you don't do them. Oh, yeah. And, and, you know, or you have a tendency not to. Like, it's really easy to, like, reward yourself. It's kind of what I feel like alcohol does. It, like, inflates your confidence and it, you know, makes you think that you're maybe going to do things that you're not actually going to do. Yeah. And then you kind of glean that joy from that moment. Like I'm going to do this. And then like when it wears off and your serotonin and dopamine is down, you're like, I like doing anything. Yeah. There's a, well, I don't know if we've talked about this, but I feel like every drug has a, like a lesson and a pro, like mm -hmm. a lesson to be learned and a pro from it. Mm -hmm. It also has like, a lot of cons and i mean some some drugs i think have more pros and cons and some have more cons and pros but mm -hmm. booze is one of those middle middle ones like like for pros for example like booze brings like so, like socialness together like yeah. we meet over drinks we right. like, like a lot more bonding happens when you're drinking with friends you know like yeah. so that's a pro. Mm -hmm. um, there's also the, that, that confidence in the ideas and stuff. And like, oh, yeah, we could do this. And like talking about mm -hmm. like life and stuff. Mm -hmm. Those are all pros. And then it also gives you um, confidence to say the things that needed to be said, but you didn't say when you're sober. That's especially for people who are like have struggle at confronting people. True. Um, where it's just like you hit that point of booze, you're like, I would have normally said this, but that really fucking hurt me. And you did this, and blah 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 blah, and it comes out. Yeah. And then the next, you're like, I should have said that, but like, no, you should have said that. That yeah, was the yeah, thing yeah. that's been eating at you. So those are like the pros. Right. But then you have all these cons of like just spinning the wheels and not doing anything, becoming an alcoholic, um, the, the effects on the liver. I mean, there's a shit to the yeah. negatives, you know? Yeah. So. No, I, I, I completely agree. Um, but yeah, and almost like, like with weed, for example, like a lot of people do really well in weed. Like it gets, gets them creative. Yeah. Um, it makes them think about things they wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. But, and I could say to some degree that happens to me, but dude, weed just makes me fucking lazy. Like, 
Then I just, yeah. when I smoke, I'm just like in the couch. I'm like, makes nope. me lazy and throws me off my diet, whatever that is. Yeah. <laughs> Every time. Dude, you're, yeah. you are so good at dieting <laughs> until you get fucked up. Dude. Like every time we go, you're like, oh no, I can't have that bread. Oh, I can't have sushi. You're like eating like real clean. <laughs> get you a little fucked up. You're like, chips. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. That's a window. Yeah. I mean, same, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. I think no, it's definitely it's definitely something to kind of ponder and like uh, I guess examine the whole lot because alcohol's like sneaky, you know. Like oh, I said, yeah. like it's social. Like nobody like gets together like over a bowl of crack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So like, do you guys want to like do some crack and we'll come over at the bar, or, you know, <laughs> like whatever. Um, but yeah, but yeah, it is like just so like socially acceptable. Yeah. But, I mean, I felt like with that, especially with the podcasting, I'm like, I know that I can get stories out of people over a little booze way easier than I can get, like, if we're sober, yeah. right? It's like Howard Stern, he was always really good at, like, convincing, somehow getting all these stories out of people that they probably would have said, and there's this there's this level of, like, drinking, hanging out, and you forget the lights are on, you forget the camera, and also you're like, oh, shit, I just told that story on air, you know, whatever. Right. he's gotten so many people to just, like release secrets or like pasts mm -hmm. whatever so yeah there is that like level of stuff but um yeah i mean i think it's just like going back to watching mm -hmm. and it, for everybody it's different like my my balance right now is still pretty pretty boozy <laughs> for the most part but yeah oh the other thing i thought about before i forgot was going into something um with intent mm-hmm like, if I'm just drinking, talking about life shit, and we're like, oh, we're going to get this done, this done, and then you wake up hungover. Mm -hmm. But there's value when I go, like, I'm going to drink and then go do this. Mm -hmm. That, like, then I can actually achieve something a mm -hmm. lot more. People uh, told me this about getting stoned. It's like, mm -hmm. if you smoke weed, sit on the couch, you won't get your stuff done. But if you're mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm going to clean, like, this is my project, I'm going to clean yeah. it, I'm going to take a toke and start. Like, then it'll make it, like, yeah. more enjoyable and you'll be able to do it and so i've mm -hmm. done that with like photo shoots for example like, mm -hmm. like okay i'm gonna go do this photo shoot i like the confidence that this booze brings me yes so i rip like two shots right. and then i go in and i'm on fucking point you know right. I'm like i know exactly what i want i'm, I'm fun i'm mm -hmm. you know like and it helps me be like confident fun funny yeah so there's like the value but yeah. then um but then if i just like wake up in the morning and be like okay i'm gonna go like I'm sure I'm going to do some shit today. Let's start drinking. You, then all of that goes out the window. Right. Yeah. yeah I think when was it was Sunday, I think it was like Sunday when you came over, there was like a Sunday or whatever day you came over. And, uh, yeah, like I had been drinking for a long time and like you got there and like, I just like the first thing in the morning, I just like immediately like opened a Corona that I had in my fridge yeah. and like drank it. You know, and I think, like, at that point, like, I had been drinking, like, so many days in a row, so it had built up for so much yeah. that, like, kind of felt like I needed it. Yeah. You know? Um, and then I really didn't like feeling like that, because I was like, okay, because, you know, you, then when you don't, then, you know, you have, like, the come down, like, yeah. coming there. But, yeah, like, somebody that I talked to that's, um, like, a little bit of a life coach he he talked about doing that like no matter what substance it is it's like treating it as like either something that you're doing to enhance you know something that whatever you're doing mm -hmm. or using it as like you know like a medicine tr treating it like it would be you know some kind of medication yeah that you take right knowing that it's going to like alter your state and then like you i mean being intentional yeah i think but you still have to you would still want to recognize this the slipperiness of it because like even if you're intentional today you're like okay yeah, I was intentional. Like today, I knew I'm getting fucked up today. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like I'm gonna do two podcasts. Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna get fucked up. It's gonna be great. Like mm -hmm. we're gonna have good conversations. But mm -hmm. then if I take that into tomorrow, and then I'm a little hungover, and then I do the you know, I'm gonna drink a Corona to escape that. Yeah. Then I could I could slip through my entire weekend. Mm -hmm. I got some stuff done on Saturday, mm -hmm. and then just waste the rest because I. Cause it slipped up on me and I lost the intention, you know? Yeah. So 
that's where like recognizing okay like i used that and it was good but then also Mm -hmm. knowing when to back off Mm -hmm. and be like okay but now i need to take that podcast and go edit it you know Mm -hmm. which i've still been avoiding on all of the i'm like yeah i'm getting i'm halfway there i'm recording things yeah but then i'm like oh it sounds like so much work so like edit it and like (laughs) so then i just find myself like like kind of be like Mm -hmm. i'll do that later whatever so yeah, and it just reminded me of a point like when I was working, you know, at the dealership or, you know, four other people and like living for the weekend, you know, you go out Friday, let's say you go out Friday and you get drunk. Yeah. And then you go out Saturday and you get drunk. Like, you know, we have the option and then what happens Sunday is like you're dealing A with the after effects of a hangover, trying yeah. to decide if maybe you drink again. Mm-hmm. And then like you can kind of see like how alcoholism happens in situations like that because you know maybe they get it before they get to go to work and they like rip a shot or they drink a beer and yeah. then that becomes like a normal thing yeah you know but i get, i don't know if it's more dangerous to have that situation or to have the situation <laughs> where you have like more freedom yeah you know well that's the when you just blow shit off and there's really no perceived like immediate consequence right i would say like um well, my favorite thing about being an adult is I get to do what I want, mm-hmm. but it's like a blessing and a curse. I mean, like, if I want to fucking quit my job and just hang out and drink at my house, I can do that. Yeah. And now that I've, like, created somewhat of a nest egg for myself, mm-hmm. I could probably do it for months yeah. and not suffer, like, right. heavy consequences. Right. But I'm like, but, but I still will suffer the consequences. Mm-hmm. You know, like, if I quit my job and I become a piece of shit, like... Some maybe some good relationships suffer because like dude like I can't hang around Josh he's just like fucked up all the time you know? so you, you lose some relationships yeah, or whatever yeah. and then you lose you know if if you go in debt or you know like there's obviously you pay for your own mm. decisions but it is very nice to be able to be like I get to do what I want yeah but you still have to suffer those consequences yeah. but yeah I mean that's a pretty powerful thing it's like you know being able like just thinking like wow I could just like cash out and just get fucked up for like six months straight yeah you know but i don't know what well, yeah there's a, like i mean there is value like so there's some people that have cashed out everything they've built say at 30 they're like I, i'm gonna travel the world for a year mm-hmm. you know and i've like considered this multiple times i'm like if i sold my house cash out all my investments i could go i could just perpetually travel mm-hmm. and there's a part of me that's just like dude that would be amazing. Mm-hmm. But then at the end, I would have to start over. over. And um, I think that it wouldn't be the same as starting over five years ago because I've learned more, so I might build it quicker, mm-hmm. but it's still starting over. Versus when, like, if I build, if I travel some during my journey mm-hmm. and then I hit a point where then I can travel more, et cetera. Yeah. But even as much as I like to travel, I notice that it, there's still, um, it's still all consumption-based mm-hmm. to me. Like, so I'll, I'll enjoy it for a while, but at some point I'm like, I'm not like producing anything. I'm right. just going around and soaking up entertainment and beauty and culture. Mm-hmm. But there's like, this, and maybe it's the creative part of me, but it's just like, yeah. I get itchy to be like, I want to make something again. You know, mm-hmm. like I, I want to go home and produce. I can't just yeah. go around and enjoy sunsets. You yeah, know? right. But yeah, I think that's like the point that I'm at now. Like, because it's kind of like, you know, when some people go to college, like if they're going to go after high school and if they drop out and they always say that they're going to go back, like odds are they're probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's a very small, there's a window of time where like at that point in your life, like that's what you should be doing. So that's what you do. Right. I mean, it's not what you should be doing, but it's just, you know, that's kind of your, your time to do that. Yeah. So I feel like right now is my time to like buckle down, you know, take advantage of these things because like you said, like I'll enjoy all of those things, you know, traveling, you know, freedom and stuff like that. Like I'll enjoy that a lot more if I know that that other part of it is like done, mm-hmm. you know, rather than being like, okay, well I'm taking a two year break, but then when I go up, I'm going to blow through this money. And then when I go back, like I know how to do it, but I got to do it again. Yeah. Yeah. I you know? know? Yeah. Yeah, man. There's like, uh, it's also weird because <laughs> I think that most of our conversations uh, around these kind of topics, there's there's moments where I feel so strongly about like 
this like way I'm living my life mm-hmm. right now. I'm like, this is this is the way. Or like, mm-hmm. I feel really good about it. Mm-hmm. And then you could talk to me six months from now, and I'm like, that was not the way. This is the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. like so, like yeah. that, almost everything that I when I look back, uh, this is kind of like leading into a different thing I think about sometimes. But um, if I look back like three years ago, I'm like I don't recognize that person. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if I look another three years ago, like that person was a completely different person and another three years. Yeah. So sometimes it's always strange to me cause I'm like, I think that like I got the path, like I, I got to figure it out a little bit right now, mm-hmm. but like, but in three years, I'm probably be like, dude, that guy was fucked. Like, <laughs> I don't even know what he was talking about. You know? Right. Um, yeah. So it's like ever yeah. changing, like ebbs and flows, I guess. Yeah. And like I said, you know, you look at like over long over long periods of time, you know, have you gone the direction? Do you feel good about the direction that you went? Yeah. Like, even though there's going to be, you know, ebbs and, you know, peaks and valleys along the way. Right. Um, yeah. Fucking five years ago. It's completely different. That's so strange. And then like, I've, the other reason why it's kind of easy for me to like buckle down and like do these things now is because like Nora's 13. So feasibly, you know, or not feasibly, like she is going to graduate. Yeah. In like five years, yeah. So, in five years, where do I want to be? You know, it's like it's like a good kind of timeline, like end of the road, and then of course, like you know, working the career that I have is very conducive to spending time with her while working really hard. Yeah. But I mean, I'm gonna be kind of faced, with, and I already started to think about it. You know, like what am I actually gonna do? Like when I have to like raise a child? Yeah. You know, like it's gonna be. I, I don't want to, like, go into that and have it be, like, this, you know, flood of, like, freedom. And it's, like, you kind of get, like, that empty empty nest syndrome. Mm-hmm. Or, like, you don't feel useful, mm-hmm. you know. So I feel like it's important for me now to, like, start to, like, you know, really put some thought into that. You know, the same thing as, like, what I tell her as far as, like, you know, it's not too early to think about what you want to do for the rest of your life. Maybe not, like, seriously, but, you know, like, start to, like, maybe, yeah. you know, pin it down. Right. Yeah, that's really interesting because um, I was thinking about that with uh, like quitting my job and going full time creative. Mm-hmm. And the last time that I qu- quit a job or got fired, I think I got fired. But uh, <laughs> then I tried to to build a business. Mm-hmm. I would find myself not doing anything. Yeah, like I, I wouldn't. I if I don't have a taskmaster. Like, mm-hmm. that says I need to do it, mm-hmm. then I won't do it. It's only mm-hmm. me saying it, and I, mm-hmm. like, couldn't... We talked about, it, it was, like, opening the computer, just, oh, like... Dude. Or when I do, I'm just like, dude, <laughs> yes. what the fuck? Man? I just... I can't. This yeah. sounds so miserable. Right. And so, when I first got to... I now have four-day weekends, mm-hmm. um, like, from the bar. When I first started, I'm like, I'm going to have so much more time to build things that I want. Mm-hmm. Um, and I probably a solid two or three months didn't do shit on every year. Like yeah. I just filled it with debauchery or whatever. And I'm like, exactly. now I just have more time to waste more money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> get fucked up. Yeah. So, but I was yeah. like, so if I can't handle four, so then I thought about like, okay, maybe I should go back to, um, less shifts in a day and do like five day weeks and have two days that way. I'm more um, adamant about using those days. But I'm like, no, I need to learn how to start utilizing this free time because if mm-hmm. I'm going to move to a position where I have complete freedom, I need to learn how to use that freedom and actually yeah. do the things I want to do. Yeah. Um, and so, and it, t- it took a process. Like, I mean, I'm not like there, mm-hmm. you know, like where I want, but I have noticed that looking back over the last couple weekends, mm-hmm. um, or like say the last eight, I have produced a lot more in those eight weekends than I did in like the first ones when I first had the four day mm-hmm. weekend, you know, so yeah. slowly but surely I'm learning how to not waste the entire weekend. You know, mm-hmm. I, I utilize half of it or more for like production mm-hmm. and building and whatever. And I still fuck off, you know, yeah, but, yeah. so I'm like, good, because I'm going to get to a position where I'm only working two days at the bar or one day at a bar or none. Right. And I can't just, I have to learn how to you util- like mm-hmm. take free time and, and section it off where I'm not always just mm-hmm. wasting everything. Yeah. So I think that's kind of the same concept. Like you're getting ready for a position where like, oh yeah, now I don't have a kid to raise anymore. And it's mm-hmm. completely wide open. Yeah. I think that made me think about something. So I'm the same way. Like if my, if I don't have anything to do during the day, like there's, I don't have any appointments or like no calls scheduled. Like it's a lot easier to just fuck off and not go to the gym. But like, yeah. 
I'm kind of the, the way where, like, if there's something on my calendar and, like, let's say I have an appointment at 10 a.m., and I'm like, oh, this kind of sucks, but I'm going to do it, obviously, because yeah. I paid for the, the marketing yeah, yeah, yeah. and whatever, so I'm not going to blow it. You know, that kind of, like, catapults me into, like, the, the right mode. Yeah. You know, so maybe, like, there's, like, a little bit of a hack to, like, maybe schedule, because <laughs> talk about, like, having an accountability partner, but, I mean, that still, like, rarely works. Yeah, uh, you I know, haven't figured out a system to make that work yet. Right, <laughs> but, like, when you have, like, a set, like, appointment yeah. with somebody or, like, you have something on your calendar where it's, like, okay, this is actually important to me or this is valuable to me, I think it's a lot easier. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you, let's say that you had, you know, you had a podcast recording at, like, you know, 10 a.m. Yeah. And, or you just had, like, something, like, every day. Yeah. You know? My, uh... We, you told me this one thing once where you're like, you're like, I wake up and I listen to certain music that gets me motivated mm -hmm. or something like, mm -hmm. and it's like a trigger. Yeah. Do you still do that? Or is that like a thing that worked or not? It is a thing that worked. I'm glad you reminded me. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, I was, you're like, when I hear this music, that means it's go time. You yeah. know, like, and I was like, that's interesting. Cause mm -hmm. I don't, I, and even my sister will say like, she's like, when I struggle waking up, I'll listen to certain music and it pumps me up. Yeah. And I'm like, I never listen to music in the morning. I just like, I'll put yeah. on a podcast. But like, sometimes that would be valuable. Anything, right? But my struggle is on days off, I always go to the gym first mm -hmm. and which is not a bad thing. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, like, I'm like, if I don't do anything else this day, at least I went to the gym. But exactly. At the same point, because I'm so, uh, like, so, so routine with that, like, when I, like, that doesn't feel like enough mm -hmm. value, you yeah. know, like, I'll still feel like a waste of space if all I did was go to the gym, right? right? Um, and I was, I was just watching a video on flow, and a lot of people say this is, like, the first couple hours of your day are, like, your best brain waves, your best day, and so part of me wants, I'm, I'm debating this, but, like, part of me is, like, no, you get up. And the first thing you do, especially if you have a day off or you have some free time, the the best thing to do is the most important thing for like your business. Whether it's like maybe it's just a photo editing session, sure. but like I wake up, I sit down, I grab some mm -hmm. coffee, and I just edit for an hour or two hours. And I've heard this from multiple people. Like mm -hmm. I get the most done in that first hour, yeah. and then I or two hours, and then they break. Mm -hmm. They go to the gym, they do whatever they fuck off, but like mm -hmm. like achieve something. And I just met this other guy. He said as soon as I go to work, he's like. The one question I always ask is, he's like, I sometimes I feel like I'm wasting time or space. He's like, I always ask, what is the most important thing I can do to build my business? Mm -hmm. um, and I'll do that thing first. Yeah. And then if the rest of the day is a waste, you still build something. Yeah. Like I did. And I've always been like, well, if I, if I do that, then I might not get to the gym. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but I probably would go to the gym after I did that. You know, like, just so uh, that's, a, that's a shift that I might actually really implement mm -hmm. moving forward because it's just like, Instead of waking up and spinning my wheels and like eating or whatever, it's mm -hmm. just like, I mean, especially if I get into intermittent fasting, just mm -hmm. wake up and fucking edit for an hour or, mm -hmm. or look at the, the podcast you did yesterday yeah. for an hour or whatever, you know, like mm -hmm. kind of just take stock. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know what you feel about that. Or no, that's, I've heard a lot of similar things about that. So there's like, somebody talks about like, when you wake up and you think about the things that you have to do to, during the day, like the thing that you dread doing the most, you need to do first. Yeah. Because like there's a saying that's like willpower is like uh, you kind of think about like on a video game, like if you're playing like Street Fighter or something, you got a, you got a life bar or something. Your willpower as the day goes, yeah, goes down and down and down. So you want to start when you got like full power. Yeah. And then there's another analogy that they use. It's called um, you know getting your big rocks done so yeah. like you think about like say i always said get them off get them off well, yeah. sometimes sometimes that's the most important thing to do so so get let's your big rocks off. yeah so let's say you have a jar and you fill it with you fill it with all the big rocks first yeah. and then the smaller rocks and then like at the end you put sand in like if you do it the other way around not, not, not everything's yeah. gonna fit okay yeah. so there's like another <laughs> analogies to that but yeah i mean i think like waking up and yeah. So what's the most important thing for me to do today? And then you do that thing first. Like it's going to give you confidence to like do the rest of all the stuff. That's yeah. Maybe not as important. And then even if you didn't do those things, you still got like the, they become the big rocks for, thing, for the right? next day. Um, yeah, I might actually have like, I'm going to think more about this this weekend. Cause that's one of my main struggles is like not struggles, but I'm just like always think, okay, I get up. 
I drink my water, mm-hmm. I water my plants. You know, I have like a little bit of a process, mm-hmm. you know, especially on days off. So I have these four days off and I mm-hmm. wake up, water the plants, whatever. I'm like, I go to the gym, like get, mm-hmm. you know, something physical done. But then I like get home, I eat, I shower, and then I'll already hit like a lull. Cause I've been up for like three hours mm-hmm. and, and now I'm already like, low, you know, so I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, fuck, now I don't want to do shit, you know? So instead mm-hmm. going after something like, I mean, the gym is important. Like my body mm-hmm. is important. It's what I have, but I, I need to try this out because yeah. almost guaranteed. I'd probably still go to the gym after this two hour yeah. period or whatever. And what you said about the um, the bar, I heard, mm-hmm. I heard talked about is like batteries, like mm-hmm. you can recharge your battery. Yeah. And now you have full power. Mm-hmm. And it's like, are you going to do the thing with full power? Or are you going to wait till like it wanes? Mm-hmm. And they say about like, that's why like Steve Jobs and other people, like they say decision making, like each micro decision you make wanes your brain power. Mm-hmm. So that that's why they say like, yeah, not to look at emails, not to scroll social media, because you're mm-hmm. making these micro decisions. Exactly. Of whether to click on this, what whether to do wear. this. And if like, each one of those micro decisions is taking away your like mental capacity versus mm-hmm. if you just get up and go right to the task, you're using full capacity or whatever. Yep. But, uh, yeah. And that's a, I mean, it's, it's always a tricky thing to do, but I, I've heard that it, from like multiple different people and like multiple different scenarios. And it's always like the same thing, yeah. you know, but cause I mean, as far as like what you were saying about going to the gym, I think, yeah, like, let's say that you're up for three hours, like, you're feeling a little bit sleepy or whatever. I think it might be more difficult to get to the gym in the middle of the day, but I think once you're there, especially once you leave, it yeah. might be, like, a second win. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, I think it... Plus, it's way the fuck better to go to the gym in the middle of the day when there's, like, not that many people. Yeah. Well, you know, I wake up so late, anyway. It's always <laughs> yeah. the middle of the day. First thing could be, like, yeah. 10. Yeah. That's the one thing, I mean, I cannot... I mean, I've got... This is another thing I might be saying now in two years, change yeah. my mind on, but I don't think I ever want to be a 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. or like just, it's, it's just no reason. And I even like, when I was up visiting Luke, it, yeah. like he, as inspiring as he is in all his stuff, he's also on that page. He's like, dude, I don't get up till 10. Like, he's like, I get a lot of work done late at night, you know? And he's like, he pulls all nighters all the time, like just in mm-hmm. like editing or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, yeah, I want to sleep in. Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter when you get up. It's just when you get up, mm-hmm. utilizing that, like, yeah. recharge. I'm the same way. Like, there's not shit for me to do before. Because like, like, when you think about like everybody that I, like the best time for me to talk to people during the day is like between like five and seven. Yeah. So, like, I can't wake up at, like, 4 a.m. and be like, hey, motherfucker, you want some soul? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I can't, oh, I, yeah, yeah, there's just, like, zero, there's zero reason to me, like, personally. I mean, I understand that that system works for certain mm-hmm. people, you know, 4 yeah. 5 a.m. club or whatever. It's just not my, in no, my nature. If I do that, if I wake up at, like, 6 a.m. and I go to the gym and I come back, like, I'm napping by, like, yeah. one. Yeah. Which maybe isn't, I mean. That maybe could be good. I, I, be good. I can't get. That's something that I'm like to on the fence on because I know a lot of people that do nap mm-hmm. and it works. Every time I fucking go down and nap, it's so hard for me to get back going. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, I'm going to do a 20 minute nap, mm-hmm. turns into an hour. Mm-hmm. Getting up takes another hour or two mm-hmm. for me to get back on like the grind. But mm-hmm. I will say, uh, this probably wouldn't be for everyone, but for me, is I've started microdosing more and more uh, mm-hmm. mushrooms. Like, mm-hmm. At that like five PM lull, where mm-hmm. I'm like, dude, I just ate. I'm like, oh, dude, mm-hmm. kind of want to get work done, but I am just not mm-hmm. motivated. Take like two mushroom little caps, mm-hmm. and like that, like will light me up. And there's been yeah. multiple times where that I'll sit down and edit. And I'll go for like seven hours after that. Just yeah, like, boop 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 boop, just like flowing, you know. I Man, I think it's just fine. Whatever works. I think that. I don't really drink that much coffee. I might have like I started having like a cup in the morning. Yeah, I had one today. And then I think maybe there was one day where I did go and I got one like in the afternoon and I I did notice like I got a lot more shit done, but I think it fucked up my sleep cycle. That's the problem with coffee. Yeah. You know? So like, even though I got so much done that day, like the net I was up, like couldn't fall asleep. And so then the next day I didn't get as much done. Mm -hmm. So it's just like constantly finding that balance. But like, yeah. Dude, I got to pee real quick. Yes, uh, it's cool. Uh, yeah. Talk about some guy. You're okay, so about. yeah. Um, that that guy, I think I sent you to his podcast, but Naval Ravikant. Mm-hmm. 
So I haven't figured out exactly how to dive into this, maybe especially with um, my work schedule, but I think the more freedom I have, I'll be able to do it easier. But he, he was saying how he's like, I'm, he's like, I'm pretty lazy. And he's mm-hmm. like, I don't do a lot of things in my day. He's like, I don't, he's like, I don't wake up in the morning and look at a calendar. That's just ch- 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 for the most part. Mm-hmm. So and he said, you'll find that the higher the performer is, he's like, he talks about Warren Buffett. He's like, Warren Buffett spends most of his time playing bridge and reading. Mm-hmm. He doesn't like take meetings. He's not in, he, he talked about, um, he's like, my email for a while was like, I don't do coffee. And he's like, if, if it's important enough for coffee, you can send me an email. If it's important enough for an email, you can shoot me a text. Like he's like, I condense everything down. He's mm-hmm. like, I don't need an hour long meeting with you mm-hmm. to talk about one thing. So he's like, he's like, this is all my time. He's like, but so I feel he's like, I'm always refreshed. I'm always relaxed. Mm-hmm. And he's like, when creativity strikes, then I go balls to the wall or I, I'm mm-hmm. paraphrasing, but so he's just mm-hmm. like, I will dive in. Like if something hits, mm-hmm. he's like, I won't sleep. Like I will pound coffee, whatever it takes. And I will, I will ride that wave as long as mm-hmm. I can to get the most done. And I have felt that in moments, sometimes microdosing mushrooms mm-hmm. or whatever. I'm like, dude, I don't want to go to bed. I want to keep doing this. Yeah. And I'll, I'll think, ah, but I got to get up to do those things. Mm-hmm. So then I, but, but, by going to sleep, then I ruin the momentum. Mm-hmm. So he like, I kind of want to dive into a little more, but he, so he uses like, no, pull an all nighter, like go in, like it doesn't matter. Like you'll sleep when, mm-hmm. when the inspiration wanes and yeah. you're not excited anymore, mm-hmm. but like ride that wave as long as possible. Cause that's when you're going to get all that shit done. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, then you can rest and you can recover or whatever. Yeah, you'll feel fulfilled. Yeah. So, um, at some point I'm going to like probably find an opportunity where that hits and I'll do that, you know, mm-hmm. but most times it's always like, Oh, but I got to work a 12 hour shift tomorrow. I can't fucking pull it all mm-hmm. nighter, you know, so that I mm-hmm. know, you know, yeah. but the more freedom I have with, yeah. or if it strikes on a Saturday, then I'm like, yeah, I'll fucking bail on playing basketball or whatever, because yeah. this is more important. I found right. this like, thing. yeah. I mean, I think it could, could go both ways. I think that, let's say that you did pull an all-nighter and you got, like, four hours of sleep. I think maybe, you know, when you're at work the next day, you're going to, like, it might rejuvenate you, like, energy-wise to think, oh, wow, like, that was really dope, but I got it done. Yeah. Like, it's done. Yeah. You know, I can I can get through this and I can go home and go to sleep. Right. Yeah, you I know? mean, I can have another energy energy drink and still... Right. Some Rather than and... think, like, oh, okay, I'm already... I'm halfway tired and I got to go home and, like, halfway start this thing over again. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's like, you know, you do you live in that world a lot more than me, like at this point, but I think it happens a lot more with like music or, you know, like ideas. That yeah. You're having, you know, that kind of thing. Well, yeah, because if you're like take music, for example, mm-hmm. yeah, if you if if a song hit you, right, you're like and you start tracking it, you're like, I'm not going to stop tracking like, dude, this like, yeah, I'm flowing, you know, mm-hmm. and, like, why would I go to sleep now just so I can be rested to do some menial thing tomorrow right. and I'm like in the moment, like let's get more tracks done. Let's mm-hmm. let's do the drums, do the bass, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> or at least get far enough. Yeah. I guess I have like I've definitely made sacrifices on sleep in the past, but it's always been for dumb shit. Like I've, I've always said I'm like, if I have the chance to have a threesome, I'll I'll go without sleep. <laughs> right. Without you know, like I'll say yes to that, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, oh well that hardly ever happens. So yeah, of course I'll yeah. I'll pull an all nighter for a threesome and I'll be exhausted tomorrow, but I that was dope, right? It's gonna get you through the day. Yeah. So that I sh- you have to, I have to take that same philosophy on creativity or some sort of problem. yeah i think that that's perfect yeah that's what i was i think trying to get it with that too is like yeah. you treat it like that because i remember that too like you know you go out on a date and like it ends really well and you end up being like up really late and you got shit to do the next day but you're like wow like that you kind of like get to like ride that for a little bit yeah longer you know yeah you can't do that every night no. you definitely could do it once in a while yeah you know, when the when the opportunity strikes yeah and then you just the next day you're like that was fucking awesome. <laughs> I, I love how, like, for some reason, I always compare, like, certain creative pursuits to sex, yeah. like, so many times. Like, right. But I do, I specifically remember one time I was working at Shine, and that was, like, a nine to fiver. Um, but I was, like, solar over the phone. Mm-hmm. And 
Like, it was fun. It was an all right job, but it was still a little... I liked Ari yeah. better. I liked going to people's houses right. a little better. Um, over the phone was annoying. And yeah. I thought I was like, oh, well, then I'll have more free time, and it's, it's just 40 hours. It's easier, yeah. But anyway, um, there was just this one night where um, I had, like, ended up having a threesome, stayed up all night, did some drugs, and, I mean, I might have slept an hour, tops, you yeah. know? I'm like, fuck, I gotta go to work. But I remember sitting at my desk, like, headphone on, being like, this sucks, I'm so <laughs> tired. But I just kept thinking, oh, but that was so hot. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. It is so <laughs> worth it. So <laughs> worth it. Like, exactly, yeah. I'll be making these calls. I'm like, dude, that was so cool. That was so cool. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, but yeah, I'm, I mean, I wonder if, like, as we get older, those things will happen less and less. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I have more threesomes now than I used to. <laughs> Fuck yeah. But, uh, yeah, there's just... I think that, like, going back to, like, the alcohol and the consumption stuff, it's, like, those things, like, those nights of cocaine and ideas and, and strippers and girl, like, those are dope. Like, it mm-hmm. doesn't mean you can't do those, mm-hmm. but you can't slip into the cycle of, oh, now I'm doing this every day, mm-hmm. you know? And... Like, finding that, like, almost, like, that idea of, uh, I have kind of wanted to do this at some point, but, like, only drinking when it's to celebrate, and only celebrating, like, bigger Mm -hmm. achievements. So, Mm -hmm. you go for two weeks not drinking, Mm -hmm. my goal for this two weeks is to do this, and then Mm -hmm. you hit it, and you're like, cool, I'll take one night and drink, Mm -hmm. and then I'll feel hungover the next day, I'll be like, this is why I don't drink too often. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, all right, let's make another, you know, whatever. Like, Mm -hmm. having that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, it's just like, yeah, of course I'll drink for your birthday. You're turning 40. Let's go. You know, Mm -hmm. like, this is going to be great. Mm -hmm. But, like, having, and there are people that do that. And I admire that because I'm like, I just drink all the time. Mm -hmm. Right. But they're like, oh, yeah, I I drink, like, once or twice a month. You know, yeah, if there's a reason to go celebrate or a reason Mm -hmm. to go out, I'm like, dude, that's that's a good goal, like, long-term, at least for me, yeah. where I would like to be. Yeah, I think if you have, like, <clears throat> maybe you have, like, shorter-term goals, like, leading up to, like, an overall, like, bigger goal, and you can do that, mm-hmm. or maybe you just have, like, a bigger goal, and, like, you don't drink at all until, like, you get that, and it's, like, you know, a huge reward, because I, I have thought about that, like, in multiple situations, like, when I've been drinking, like, nobody's... <sighs>